Welcome to Katie Draws. Over here, I like to draw and talk about folk tales, mythology, gods, goddesses, heroines, etc. at the same time. Today, we're going to be talking about Lada, an alleged Slavic pagan deity from mostly the Baltic region. There's a lot to unpack here, so we're going to get started right away. Before I begin, I just want to remind you that you can find all of my socials in the description down below, including my Patreon account. I'm starting that up. Now, let's get started. Before we talk about Lada herself, I want to explain some of the issues with mythology. Maybe they're not actual issues, but just an explanation. Lada is the perfect representation of assimilation from one religion to another. Some scholars say Lada was actually created to influence other pagans to start believing in Christianity, or at least a new generation of children to start transition over to Christianity. But let me just talk more about that first before we talk about Lada herself. So we don't have a lot of information about pagan Slavs specifically. We can probably say that they were most likely polytheistic. And we can also probably surmise that a lot of Slavs worshipped each god based on their clan, based on their region. Slavic deities ranged from all sorts of areas. We can divide these areas into a lot of places. So we have like West Slavs, people that lived in Poland, the Czech Republic, Slovakia. We have Eastern Slavs, which would be like Russia, Belarus, or Ukraine. Southern Slavs are people who may have lived in Croatia, Bosnia, etc. What I'm trying to say is it's big. The area is massive. Thus, their religion is also vast. We can't just say, just like the Celts, we can't say the Celts or the Slavic pagans all were this umbrella term that all believed probably this one thing everywhere. This might not be true. In addition, there are theories, and this is something you'll find in mythology everywhere. Our ancestors, believe it or not, communicated with each other all the time. We ran into each other and we exchanged stories. Sometimes those stories stuck with us. And a lot of the times, many of these folk tales aren't necessarily original. So let me talk about that a little further. So there's a theory that probably 2,000 years ago, or even further, the Celts held a very dominant position in Central and Western Europe. And at that time, they were in direct contact with the Romans and the Germans and probably Illyrian tribes and probably some Slavs. Now, not entirely, but we also have the Germans. So the Germanic tribes, so people who believe in a lot of that Norse mythology, those tribes also were very much interconnected with some Slavic nations. I mean, Germany is right next to a lot of the Western Slavic areas. It makes sense that a lot of people intermingled and exchanged stories. How does this all apply to Lada? Many of Lada's attributes are similar, if not identical, to many pagan gods. One being Aphrodite from Greek mythology, or even Freya from Norse mythology. Like many pagan tribes, one of the many downfalls is that most of their traditions and beliefs were never written down. Many of the myths were passed down verbally. Most of what we know about Slavic pagans are through the lens of Christian clergymen. As a result, no surprise, we get an incredibly biased view of what Slavic paganism looked like. Even further, we don't even know if Lada is a deity from pre-Christian times or was actually used and created as a tool for assimilating Slavic pagans. Scholars are still divided on whether or not Lada is an original deity from the Slavic pantheon, or she's not. So let's break it down a little bit. The first record of Lada that is known is from the 1400s in Poland. Yay for clergymen being obsessed with writing. But it isn't nice what they write. They actually propose a warning against worshipping Lada and other pagan gods 
during specifically spring ceremonies and folk performances, they actually compare it to Sodom and Gomorrah. It's quite melodramatic. We also see the word Lada being compared with the Roman god Mars and his cruelty. In fact, Lada throughout the 16th and 18th century is compared to many Roman gods and goddesses. We can't really seem to pin her down. It's an incredibly difficult topic. Most recently, in 2019, two historians, Judith Kallick and Alexander Uchtel, argue that Lada is actually a phantom god in the Slavic pantheon. Basically, these are gods and myths that are based on names of Greek or Egyptian gods that the word Lada derives from a really meaningless song or phrase that appears in Slavic folk songs. Lado, Lada. So that happens all the time. And they actually turned that phrase into two gods. And this is a theory that's actually been tossed around before. This is just now further reaffirming it. So these historians believe that Lada is a creation from anti-pagan clergymen to assimilate the pagans to a different belief system. Over time though, Lada is known as a goddess of beauty and love. She is also a goddess of fertility and the end of winter or springtime. People would describe her as cute, harmonious, and stunning. In folk tales, she would even wear her golden hair as a wreathed crown over her head. She is technically the embodiment of divine beauty and youthfulness. She is typically portrayed as a voluptuous and full-bodied woman, sometimes even pregnant. There are some stories of Lada luring men, not necessarily in a good way, thus again reaffirming that maybe she was actually created to scare pagans off away from paganism. In earlier texts, Lada is connected with her twin brother, Lado. Some scholars suggest this is a representation of duality, which is very important in Slavic paganism, potentially. That's not entirely 100% true. Scholars still debate this. Lado may actually mean, quote, spouse, or like the other part of Lada. In later versions, Lado evolves to be Lada's son, instead to further her representation as a fertility goddess or a goddess of motherhood, springtime, etc. There is, however, records in history from Baltic states that do note the existence of a winter goddess, Lada, and rituals related to her worship during the, quote, days of ice and hail. After the Christianization of the Slavs, the worship of Lada transferred to the Virgin Mary. Currently, many Slavic neo-pagans do worship Lada as a spring fertility goddess of love and beauty. As you can see, Lada's history may be shorter than many goddesses, but it's still incredibly complex. You can probably tell that Lada is quite a complex deity. If you're interested in more about Slavic pagan history or Lada herself, there are a lot of citations down in the description below to get you started. You will also find down below my socials for Instagram, TikTok, etc. at Katie Draws down below and information about my Patreon. I'd love to see you there. If you do enjoy these videos, you can keep on watching. There's plenty more to see and talk about. Until then, see you later.